Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. Last week, I acquired quite a pile of thrifted home decor items from estate sales, thrift stores, even an Amazon clearance center. And I was so excited to see what I could do with them. So today, I'm going to show you how I upcycled, repurposed, and combined my thrifted finds in interesting and always budget-friendly ways. I think there are a lot of ideas here that you can use in your own thrift flips. So let's get started. A couple months ago, I picked up two vintage desk drawers at a Goodwill in Wisconsin for just $3 each, and I finally had some ideas for what I wanted to do with them. First, I used my angle grinder to remove the metal piece that protruded at the back of each drawer. Since the large drawer was missing one of its handles, I removed the handle from the small drawer and reattached it to the large drawer. I just added a little wood glue to the back and hammered it back in using its original nails. I lightly sanded and scrubbed the drawers to remove surface stains. I created a stencil on my Cricut machine, which I applied to the side of the large desk drawer. Because some of the cutout letters were very close to the edge of the vinyl, I added an extra scrap of vinyl across the top so I wouldn't have to be so careful when I was dabbing on the paint. One of the nice things about creating your own vinyl stencils is that there is practically no bleed through. The lettering was so clean and perfect that I hesitated to sand it. But I did, because I wanted a more aged, distressed look. Then I added a coat of clear wax to the entire exterior of the drawer. Remember those metal legs I got at the Amazon Clearance Center for only $3? I easily attached them to the bottom of the drawer using short but fat screws. <music> Now to make over the small drawer. I wanted to line the bottom of the drawer with a piece of the player piano music roll that I bought at the estate sale last week. I cut a piece of the music roll to fit and I was able to remove two of the three drawer dividers. The paper was very fragile so I chose to adhere it with glue stick to avoid wrinkles or tears. I've had great luck using Elmer's Craft Bond glue stick in projects. Since I had removed the handle from the front of the drawer, I sanded it down and then attached a different handle from my stash. I actually like this chippy handle better than the original. If you saw last week's video, then you know I found an interesting wood floor lamp on the side of the road. The first thing I did was to remove the fake drawers that weren't fooling anyone. I noticed the wood color was bleeding through the blue paint in some spots, so I took the lamp outside and gave it a good coat of Zinsser Primer. I filled the screw holes with some wood filler and when the filler was dry, I sanded it smooth. And then I painted the lamp with two coats of a creamy white chalk paint. I had a couple pieces of metal scroll work that I had cut off of something in the past, I don't know what. 
I attach them to the sides of the lamp using two small pipe straps. I painted over them with the same creamy white chalk paint, and then I distressed the entire lamp and the scroll work using a sanding block. Because the scroll work jiggled around a bit, I further adhered it to the lamp using some clear Gorilla Glue. Then I applied a coat of clear wax to the lamp. I found a lampshade in my stash that was the perfect size for the lamp, but of course I first had to hot glue some fringe along the bottom. Last week, I thrifted a round metal frame that I thought had once held a mirror, but a viewer informed me that it had once been a clock. I was not fond of its dark Tuscan-style color, so I painted it with two coats of a light green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper to emphasize the design, and then I applied a coat of white wax, dabbing off the excess. I found a scrap of cardboard and cut out a circle to fit snugly inside the frame. Then I centered a thrifted piece of needlework over the piece of cardboard. I trimmed off a lot of the excess fabric and then I taped it in place to double check that I had the needlework aligned on the cardboard the way I wanted. I cut slits along the edge of the fabric so that it would lay flat against the cardboard and then I adhered it using hot glue. I inserted the cardboard into the metal frame and folded down the metal prongs to hold it in place. It was like these two pieces were meant to be together. I bought a wicker suitcase for just $3 at an estate sale. I knew I could potentially waste a lot of paint trying to cover up the bright colors on this suitcase. So I used my favorite Zinsser primer, which almost completely covered it in just one light coat. But then I gave it a second coat just for good measure. And then I applied an IOD rose transfer. I wasn't sure how it would stick to the wicker, but it actually went on quite easily. I was going to wrap the handles with twine so I didn't tape them off while spray painting, but I ended up liking their worn vintage appearance. <music> When my sister-in-law recently visited from Arkansas, she brought me this fantastic table base that she found in the trash. I removed the legs from the pedestal by removing the bolts and screws that held it in place. 
I filled the holes in the pedestal with the pieces of dowel rod that had popped out, and I sawed them level. This way, I wouldn't have to use so much wood fill to disguise the holes. Still, I went over all the dowel rods with wood filler, and when it was dry, I sanded it smooth with my orbital sander. Then I sprayed it with my favorite Zenser primer, and then gave it two coats of the creamy white chalk paint. Originally, I had thought of staining it, but even though the legs were solid wood, it turns out that the pedestal was not real wood. I gave it a good distressing using a Dollar Tree sanding block. I had an old column base that had come apart and decided to marry its pieces to this pedestal. I decided not to permanently attach the pedestal to the base right now, but I did use wood glue to attach the round piece to the top of the pedestal. Then I sprayed it really well with a matte clear top coat. I recently went to a clearance sale at a local architectural salvage store and picked up this thermos and this toy baby buggy for just a couple dollars. I wanted to add some faux plants to the buggy, but I wanted them to be removable, so I found this small box which I painted black and distressed. I added some styrofoam to the box and then I began adding stems of various faux plants that I had on hand. I chose plants in dark greens and reds to match the dark tones of the buggy. I put taller plants in the back and droopy plants in the front. I also try to add a variety of textures. One little succulent looked especially fake, and so I glued some faux berries in the center. When I was done adding plants, I hot glued reindeer moss to any spots where I could see the styrofoam. I can't believe I picked up this vintage wood canister set on half price day for just one dollar. I popped off the eagle appliques and removed the plastic inserts and false bottoms. Then I gave the canisters a good cleaning and painted them with two coats of celery green chalk paint. I sanded the stain off of the wood lids and applied a coat of white wax to lighten and even out the wood tone. I printed out some vintage botanical images on regular copy paper in sizes to fit the side of each of the canisters. I applied a light even coat of Mod Podge to the back of the image and to the side of the canister and then carefully adhered the two together, smoothing out any wrinkles with a brayer. When the Mod Podge was dry, I applied a top coat of Mod Podge over the image to seal and protect it. Then I applied a coat of clear wax to the rest of the canister. <music> Thank you. 
At that same sale, I also picked up a needlepoint picture of a small hummingbird for just $2. I popped out the needlepoint and gave the frame a couple coats of white chalk paint and lightly distressed it. Then I found and applied a small scrap of a floral IOD transfer in colors that matched the needlepoint. It didn't stick well to the inner curved part of the frame, so I sanded off those sections that did stick and painted over it. Once the paint was dry, I reinserted the needlepoint. Initially, the frame had no back to it, so I cut a corner off of an old folder and adhered it to the wood frame using spray adhesive. Originally, I thought this vintage record case that I found at Goodwill was perfect, but when my good friend Julie of Julie's Designs and Signs sent me some new IOD transfers and I saw these 1970s style mushrooms, I thought they would be an adorable touch to the front of the case. I was at my Dollar Tree the other day and saw these cute little pin cushions for the first time and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I was pretty sure that it would fit perfectly inside this ceramic bird that I picked up at Goodwill for a dollar. First, I put a piece of styrofoam inside the bird. I cut off the plastic bottom and discovered that there was a second plastic bottom but I left it in place because I was able to squish it and get it inside the bird. It was a perfect fit. I love combining my thrifted finds, so it only made sense that I should use the front of a thrifted note card inside the silver frame that I purchased at the same sale. I love this tiny violet print, and I don't think anyone would guess that it is just a note card. Then I thought I'd combine a bunch of faux flowers that I bought at the Amazon Clearance Center with a small silver teapot that I picked up at the estate sale. I just hot glued a small piece of styrofoam into the base of the silver teapot. I used wire snips to cut down the stems of the faux flowers and then haphazardly arranged them inside the teapot. Since they were sold as a bouquet, I already knew that they would look good together. However, I did remove one stem that I didn't particularly like, and I found some droopy vines in my stash to stick in the front to hang over the edge. While arranging the flowers, I accidentally broke off the handle of the teapot, so I reattached it with some Gorilla Glue. I had picked up some chunky gold frames at the estate sale for 50 cents each. They had some very generic floral prints inside, and I decided to replace them with some wallpaper samples from the sample book that I purchased at that same estate sale. I decided to go with a red and black Asian pattern because I liked the way it fit inside the frame. I cut it to fit and then I just used glue stick to adhere it to the back of the cardboard print. At this point, I decided that black frames would look better with these wallpaper samples. And so I painted my frames with black chalk paint and then distressed it so that some of the gold showed through. 
Then I applied a coat of antiquing wax. I reinserted the piece of cardboard folding down the staples to hold it in place, and then I used spray adhesive to reattach the original cardboard back. When I went to the architectural salvage clearance sale, I also picked up a piece of vintage art that was absolutely covered in dust. So I was totally thrilled when I cleaned it up and saw just how beautiful and vibrant the colors of the print still were. Last week, I asked you to guess how many times I used the word cute throughout my video. So thank you all who participated. It turns out I used it a ridiculous 29 times. Several of you guessed correctly and the GeForce 7 was randomly selected to receive an Amazon gift card. So if you're the GeForce 7, please email me. I was really pleased with how this week's projects turned out. I especially liked the lamp and the large drawer with the metal legs. But I wonder which thrift flip was your favorite? Thank you so very much for watching today. Hope to see you next week. Bye bye for now. If you like thrift flip videos, here's another one I think you'll like.